WiMAX stand. And so you are showing uh, like the next generation WiMAX? Is that what it is? Well, it's actually uh, the first generation WiMAX in the standard of what we call 802.16e which is a standard which allows not only fixed but also nomadic and portable applications. Right. So this is the first prototype you will see. We will launch this on the market um, around about by mid this year and get into commercial deployment, uh, say September, October time frame. Does that mean that uh, for the first time people can have the PDA or something like this on the, on the network? Uh, we are not that there yet uh, because it needs chipset suppliers who integrate a WiMAX chip into the processor chip of, uh, uh, of a PDA or of a laptop. At the beginning we will see uh, what we call CPEs or customer premises equipment either in form as a, as a desktop CPEs connected with a USB cable to your laptop or uh, you will see PCM CIA cards. Uh, emerging in the second half of this year and uh, dominating the market throughout uh, 2007 and by the end of 2007 we will see integrated chipsets as you s similar to what you have now with Centrino from Intel with a Wi-Fi chipset embedded in it. Uh, how long time did you say within? Well, I, I guess they will emerge uh, end of 2007, uh, beginning 2008, the embedded oh. WiMAX chipsets in the PDA and, Inside, and, yeah. and in the in the laptop right. or other devices. So, so you're part of the WiMAX forum, and so you. We are part of the WiMAX forum. Yes, we've actively worked on it, and uh, we are. We intend to become one of the big players uh, in this field simply because Alcatel is already one of the market leaders in wired broadband, in ADSL, so it's quite logic that we go also into wireless broadband segment. Right. So, so uh, is it, when is it going to be available, uh, this kind of uh, WiMAX E? The, the, the WiMAX E equipment will be available in the second half of this year and we will start deploying in uh, our first customers. Uh, Starting at um, July, August time frame, uh, the first systems uh, for commercial use. For example, Vienna, you have something there? For instance, Vienna is one of the examples. The others I'm not yet entitled to disclose. If there's a city who needs Wi Fi, uh, WiMAX, yes. they need uh, to have hundreds of these around the city? No, 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 no. But again, it depends. Uh, the number of base stations you need uh, depends on the license you have, uh, how much spectrum, how much frequency spectrum uh, allocated to you uh, in this license. So, and uh, this is also a determining factor for the number of base, uh, and also what kind of services would you like to deploy. Right. The more bandwidth you want to deploy, the better indoor penetration you want. The more base stations you will need. All right. So there's there's uh, there's something with the indoor penetration. So you need because of that you will need more and more of the machines. You cannot just have one at the on the Eiffel Tower and the whole of Paris have WiMAX. Certainly not. No. Certainly not. Because let me give you an example. With this configuration, you can uh, you can configure one site, one uh, let me call it one antenna site or WiMAX site, in three sectors, three times 120 degrees. And if, assuming uh, you have 10 megahertz spectrum uh, bandwidth in your, in your license, you will be able to provide within the sector um, in the range of 25, 27 megabits, which have to be shared by the number of subscribers in the sector. So, uh, since there is a, a low probability uh, that your 100 subscribers will all at the same time use WiMAX, uh, if you have, let's, let's say, 25 megabit, yeah. so you can serve 10 customers giving 2.5 megabit each at the same time. So if you take a reasonable overbooking factor of say, 10, you can uh, have 100 customers, uh, WiMAX customers in one sector, meaning 300 customers on one side. But, uh Depending on the, the gigahertz, uh, what's it called, then you can only do 25 megabits from, from one of these machines, or? Well, if you only have 5 megahertz spectrum, 
we will not be able to supply 25 megabit in the sector from the same base station because right. your radio resource your radio resources are not enough. It's very simple. Right. You are, the technology is available to deliver you a certain number of bit per hertz, around about three, something between three and four hertz, uh, four bits per hertz. This yeah. is what we call spectrum efficiency. That's the WiMAX efficiency. Ra that's how it works. Roughly, yeah. that's a very rough figure. So, less hertz or less megahertz you have, less bits or megabits uh, yeah. you transmit. It's, uh, very logic. So, more spectrum you have, more megahertz you have, more bits you can transmit, right. more megabits you can transmit. This is, uh, right. But why would, uh, why would they have less megahertz? Because uh, this is uh, a matter of uh, the regulator who defines the rules in a country for how to operate a network. It also depends on uh, how much, how many megahertz uh, the regulator will make it available to a certain number of operators. Uh, there are countries uh, where, for instance, in the 3.5 gigahertz band, there is not much spectrum left for historical reasons. Uh, take like France, they only have uh, 2 times 15 megahertz left. Germany is a bit better, they have 2 times 42, 42 megahertz left uh, to give to potential operators. So there is other countries who are more generous for whichever reason, like Austria, they allocated 2 times 21 or 2 times 28 to each operator. So the business you can make with a WiMAX network largely depends, among others, uh, on your license conditions and on the spectrum you get allocated for your license. So if there are more than one operator in one country, they would use the same... Uh, the same they use the same frequency, frequency band, yeah. frequency band. Uh, and if there is only, say, 100 megahertz available, uh, he has only, can only distribute 100 megahertz. If he right. wants five operators and he wants a, a fair licensing process, he would probably give 20 megahertz to each. Right. Uh, okay. So the receivers would uh, be compatible with any WiMAX in the whole world? Is that the point? This is our objective. This is yeah. why we have a, an agreement with a, uh, with a, with a chipset uh, supplier, with Intel, it's public knowledge. And one of the objectives of this agreement is to make sure that uh, our infrastructure works with as many CPs, yeah. uh, of as many suppliers we, we will see on the market. Right. To have a, a transparency, to have a, which, which opens the market, because we believe this will accelerate the investment. Right. But just uh, what would be the absolute maximum uh, bit rate? Uh, uh, if you have, uh, I'm describing yeah. the impossible, but the extreme case. But just to answer your question, yeah. uh, if you were a very rich man and if you yeah. would need a lot of bandwidth and you're prepared to spend a lot of money. I will put one WiMAX antenna only for you and it would provide you with 25 megahertz. Or 25 megabits, sorry. 25 megabits. 25 yeah. megabits, which is fine because I would only have one customer yeah. in the sector. Alright. Okay? So okay, do you understand the, the principle? Yeah. I provide a certain bandwidth yeah. or data rate in one sector. Alright. And these resources have to be shared by the users in this sector. Alright. Very simple. Yeah. If you have one, yeah. you get the totality. If you have 10, you get only a tenth of it. All right. But if you are like uh, at the very popular center of the city, can you have more than one? Then of course, you make smaller cells. Smaller cells. You make smaller cells, smaller sectors. Right. You have more base stations. You have more investment. Right. But if you have more revenues, because there is more subscribers right. on a given surface, which justifies uh, more investment. It's very simple. OK. OK, thanks. OK. Thank you.